going to be adding a bit of twist to some of our um, broadcasts, uh, especially to deal with some questions that people send in and issues that has to do with uh, things happening around us. So um, today I have Minister Victor Abaya with me. He's going to share some questions and then I'm going to give insight on some of these questions that people have sent in, things that have um, bothered their hearts, things that has to do with the this personal decisions, destiny, um, things that has they need counseling and answers for. So we're going to look at some of these topics and then we'll see how it goes. Um, so you're also free to send in anything you would like to be discussed. Anything that has to do with young people, career, things that has to do with direction in life, or anything at all that is bothering you and you want to get some insight and counsel on what to do. So, uh, Victor, you're welcome. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be yeah, here with that's, you. That's great. That's great. So, uh, you have some questions that people have sent in that um, want us to give some advice on it. So, let's have the first question. All right. Um, the first question is, um, somebody sent in this question earlier. He said, um, I am contemplating on doing money ritual mm. because I am frustrated. Mm. Please cancel me. What would you mm. say to this person? Money ritual. Well, does ritual give money? However, I think uh, some of the things that young people are facing a lot of pressures and problems, especially in our nation today, and um, people have lost um, um, hope in paid employment and um, you know people have graduated from school um, even people who are qualified to go to schools there's no money to go to school so people want it the easy way out my answers will always be um, taken from a spiritual angle and aspect to it money rituals um, Jesus Christ said, what will it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? And uh, that's a very, very deep question. That's yes. a very, very deep question. Uh, for a young person to be contemplating to do money rituals, I don't think that's the way. Because when you do money rituals, you're mortgaging your soul. You're mortgaging your whole destiny into the hands of the devil. Number one is when you start with money ritual, you have to continue with money ritual. Yes. Uh, every sacrifice needs a maintenance dose. Mm. And then how, how, how far can you keep doing that? Secondly, you are selling your soul, so you are living a borrowed life. Mm. If the devil is bad and wicked, then when you commit your soul to him, that's even more tragic. More, more tragic. Yeah, because when you uh, you do rituals, your wealth is no longer really your own. It's satanic. It belongs to the devil. Mm -hmm. And he can take it at any time and take you in mm -hmm. addition to the wealth. Mm -hmm. So you are not really going to enjoy that wealth. You're not going to live happy. You're not going to live peaceful. And um, depending on what ritual you're going to use to get that wealth, if it is, mm -hmm. if it is people, the blood of those people are going to cry after you day and night. Uh, many people who have gotten well through that means, if you ask them, they will tell you that there is no sleep. They don't sleep at night. The blood cries out. You know, in the Bible, the Bible, in the, Bible the scripture talks about Cain and Abel. For all through the life of Cain, Cain never had peace. He killed his brother because he wanted to have preeminence. He was um, um, envious about how God related with his brother. So he went and killed his brother. And the Bible says the blood of Abel kept crying out. It cried out so much that Cain told God that this, the, 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 the weight of this crime that he's committed is too much. You know, that, that everyone who sees him wants to kill him. Because that blood of Abel, which is the blood of death, followed Cain all through his life. He kept following him every time. Every time he closes his eyes, he's hearing the voice of Abel. And that cry was also coming to heaven because mm. God said the cry of the, your brother's blood is coming mm. to me yes so there are so many ways that God can help you make it in life uh, money ritual is not a good option because that money is already bloody money is satanic money and it's money that you will not have peace with mm. I would rather advise that you go seek a good mentor 
who looked to somebody you have looked up to, who you show his hands are clean, he has a business or anything like that. Go to him for mentorship. Tell him I want to serve you and I want to be trained in this trade that you want to go through. Money ritual is not the way to go. Mm. Yeah, That's powerful, know. Pastor. Mm. Mm. That's yeah. very powerful. You know, the, um, oh, from the, the Bible says that the devil cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Yeah. And this is a very subtle way that the devil also um, uh, deceives many. Yes. Um, so, yeah. uh, Somebody else says, I, I have made serious mistakes in the past. Mm. I have done so many terrible things. Mm. Can, I, can, I, can I turn a new life? Can I have a new life going forward? Yeah, there, there is always a, a second chance. In life, life is difficult, but there is still a second chance. Um, as long as you don't give up. Many people who have made it in life, if you ask them, they have a long story to tell. Many a times, we meet people at their harvest season, so we think they never failed. I was listening to this young man talk, um, Mark Zuckerberg, who is the founder of Facebook. Yes. And he said um, he's made a lot of mistakes. He wasn't Facebook wasn't the first project he actually so, uh, did to succeed. That he had done chat rooms, he had done games, he had done so many things. And those things failed. But he kept going on until he stumbled on Facebook. Mm. And while he was also talking, he talked about this lady that wrote uh, the book on uh, Harry Potter. Mm. Uh, even though, and then he said that this lady was an aspiring author. She was actually a single mother. And um, she tried 12 times and was turned down by different publishers before she got the Harry mm. Potter stuff. You know, so... People fail in life and have failed many times in life and they are still failing in life. But it is the one they succeed in that uh, announces them. And so yes. everybody thinks that they started off very successful. Yes. You know, I've tried many things also, even before getting some things right and getting some other things wrong. So you are allowed to fail in life, mm. but don't intentionally go to fail. You, you step out to want to make something out of your life. And some people made mistakes based on the kind of companions they've kept. Some people um, who, as they were growing up, peer pressure and the kind of friends they met led them to take decisions that they now regret. Now, the point in life is... Don't keep going on the wrong road and just keep crying and saying, I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake, I've made it, and just keep going. The moment you realize you've made an error, you have to make a 360 degrees, mm. you know, back turn and begin to head in the right direction. God is merciful and he will forgive you mm. and give you an opportunity to get back to the right place and the right thing he wants you to do again. You know, uh, there are a lot of people in the Bible. You have a whole lot of people who have failed and come back to God. And God gave them a second chance. Even those who were with God still made mistakes and God still gave them a second chance. It was only those who never came back to God that died uh, embarrass, uh, embarrassing deaths, uh, tragic deaths and all those things. Yes. You know, when you look at even our Lord Jesus Christ had 12 people and uh, Judas who was supposed to be one of the trusted, he made a mistake. He actually sold Jesus Christ. In fact, uh, funny as it sounds, Judas was, uh, in the New Testament, one of the first people who was plotting a kidnap for ransom. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, Judas went to the chief priest and they promised him 30 shekels of silver so that he would lead them to kidnap Jesus Christ. Hmm. And uh, he went along with that because he was greedy for money. He was the one who was keeping the finances. And so he found another way to make quick money. And, um, and he ended up badly. I mean, he really didn't mean it. He wanted to play a fast one on the Pharisees because he thought that when they captured Jesus, Jesus would disappear. And he would have his 30 shekels and Jesus is still there. But that was not to be. So also, this is a life lesson. For people, things don't turn out the way you have been told it will turn out. 
And you know, when people start leading young people into certain directions, certain activities, certain projects, you need to ask clear questions. Mm. If something is too good to be true, then it is it not, is true. not true. I think you know that yes. thing. And when something is too good to be true, it's really not true. Um, I remember, even now, it takes me back to the first question. There was a young man who um, came to me and then um, somebody had was taking him to God there, uh, you know, to show him a way to make money that will be rich. Mm. So they kept going, going, going until they reached the point where they have to now have to make rituals. And, uh, I think some of that ritual had to do with somebody who was uh, very, very dear to the young man. Mm. The young man said, no. I mean, if I if I have to go through all this, will I have a conscience to mm. live with it? So no matter what your life has been, there is a way to turn around. God can turn your life around. Mm. You know, even um, we talk to even young ladies who may feel that they also have lost a good opportunity of their life, they've messed up and all those kind of things, and people live with that guilt. Yes, the guilt will be there, but you can turn around. Mm. As long as there is life, there's hope. Yes. Right? Yes. So, yes, he can turn around and sincerely decide to go the right path. Jesus will give you all that you need. God can restore you back to your path. Yes. Destiny again. Yes. Yeah, I believe so. And I know so. I see many people in that, uh, in that uh, situation. It's never, it's never over. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for that yeah. response. Yeah. Um, if you are the one that has asked that question, you've gotten the right answer. You can still turn a new life. There is still hope. Yeah. All right. So, which, which, this brings us to the last question. How do I connect to God's plan for my life? How mm. do I know I am in the, in the right will of mm. God's plan for my life? Mm. Yeah, that, that's such a big question. A lot of people ask that question. How do I know God's plan for my life? Now, this person has asked, how do I know I am in God's plan for my life? Now, if you want God's plan, number one is um, you have to be in God. Mm. That's, that's the first step. You have to be in God. If for God to guide you and for you to know you are in God's plan for your life, the first thing is that you need to be in God and that means you need to be in Christ because Christ is the will of God. Mm -hmm. Christ is, is God personified. You need to. Uh, there are four or five ways I like to give people um, to channel them into God's will for their life. Uh, I say that's the purpose of God for man. Generally, I'll give you that general. And then from there, specifics will start coming. You know, a, a God's purpose for your life. Number one is that it is God's will that you love him. Mm. That's number one. Number one is God's will that you love him and God's will to love you. Number two, it is God's will and purpose that you serve him. Mm. Number three, it is God's will, it's God's purpose that you become a part of his family. Mm. It is God's will, God's purpose for you to be like him and then to tell others about him. It, your life must revolve around these five purposes. To know him, to love him, to be a part of his family, to be like him, to tell others about him. These are the questions if you drive your life towards it, you can be able to discover God's purpose for your life. God doesn't reveal everything all at once to us. It's a journey. It is a step-by-step -step approach. When God spoke to Abraham, he said to Abraham, um, leave your father's house to a land that I will show you. So one obedient leads to another. God's big picture for your life is made of small, small steps of obedience. Mm. And those steps must be towards him. You can't be living a secular life, doing your own thing, and then you think you are in God's purpose and perfect way for your life. It's not possible. Jesus says, come unto me. 
It's when you come to him that he will begin to direct your life in the way that it should go. So if you are not in Christ, you are completely out of God's purpose for your life to start with. Now, when you come to God, as you walk with him and as you serve him, God begins to reveal specific things about your life. For example, when we talk to singles, people want to know, I want to know God's will for my life. My God's, I want to know who God wants me to marry. I want to be right in my choice of a life partner. The first question I ask the person is, apart from this, in all that things about your life, have you been seeking God? Because if you're living your life and then when it gets to marriage, you suddenly want God to speak to you about your life partner. It means already you don't know God's voice. You must have to learn God's voice and not just have an emergency God speaking to you just at the point of your relationship. So there must be a relationship, first of all, for you to hear God. At a point when um, the angels were going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, it took God a while, but he said, can I hide from Abraham what I'm going to do? Seeing that he would command his children after me. God already had a relationship with Abraham. And so he couldn't hide things from Abraham. So before you begin to know God's will for your life, there must be a relationship with God. You must relate to him. And then you, after you relate to him, you, part of that relationship is you begin to learn how to hear God speak. Because God will take interest in you when you have taken interest in him. Mm, that's so correct. it is when you have that relationship with God that you can begin to know what is God's will for your life. So it's not just a one-off thing and just know, oh, this is God's will for me. It comes in that relationship. God speaks to you. God speaks to you as you keep relating with him because there's a relationship. Then you can hear him. Yes. You know, the Bible says that God is our heavenly father. So there has to be that father-son relationship. And it is from that relationship he begins to package what he has for you. What is your inheritance? He begins to reveal them to you. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the place of prayer, maybe as you study the Bible, and then your spirit mind is open, and then God begins to drop things. And then you just begin to know inside of you, yes, I'm in God's will. You know inside of you, yes, I'm in God's will. I remember when I had to move from one place to another, I, since I already sense how God leads me, when the time came, that sensing become clear. Mm. You know, it's a spiritual thing. And you need to develop your spirit man. Because God speaks to you spirit to spirit. Mm. If you've not developed your spirit man, you can't really know and hear God speaking to you. So, so I think it is a step. The person first has to come to God, develop a relationship, and begin to build your spiritual man, your ears, so that you can be sensitive as God is nudging you on. You know, so that's, that's how it starts. Yeah, that's how it starts. So, um, for those of you who have asked these questions, I hope we've been able to help you with some of this. Um, sometimes it comes down to specifics. Sometimes it's generic. And then gradually, the Spirit of God breaks them down. So, number one is that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So, there is no need for money ritual. There's no need for much. Jesus has paid the price for all the prosperity you can ever have in this life. So come to Christ, come to the Father, and he begins to give you what is your inheritance. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to get into covenant with the devil for that to happen. Number two, you've missed it. You've messed up. That's fine. That's why Jesus came. Jesus said, the Father sent me into the world not to condemn the world, but that through me the world may be saved. So there is a, a place for you to be able to come back, you know, to the Father again, you know, through the relationship in Jesus Christ. And then finally, finding God's will and knowing that you are in God's will, get into relationship with the Father. You know, we don't use God. You know, you come to God because He loves you. You experience the love of God. And from there, he guides you into his way. God doesn't need money, doesn't need car, doesn't need houses. He wants to give this to his children. Mm. So we are giving you this counsel, and I believe that God will bless your life as you walk in this counsel. And if you have any more questions on this, please feel free to send it to our conversation and inspiration. And God's willing, we will give you the right kind of counsel. God bless you for listening today.